I could just destroy it. Can we hit it? We could just hit the speaker with a... I, d I don't know what to do. I, d I think we're live right we're now, live. actually. We hit the speaker with a baseball bat, and then nobody has to hear Good it morning, everyone. Show. It's uh, an irregularly timed <laughs> episode of TCS TV Live. <laughs> um, we are complaining about the radio. We yes. cannot get hopefully it to Hopefully you guys can hear it. it off. Um, hopefully it doesn't get flagged for copyright music. So. <laughs> okay. But uh, we are here with Trisha Gillings from Panasonic Hi, Canada, Trish. and Hi, Trish is our favorite rep by far. Uh, oh. Did I just <laughs> say that on live TV? Oh, oh no. Oops, uh, sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we do have a wonderful relationship, and we're happy to have you here. And we Thank have you. a very exciting live show because yeah. you got a new we camera out. We wouldn't just do this at 8.30 in the morning no. yes, in the shop I know, for any I know. reason, but yes. <laughs> because we've got a couple now very cool announcements this morning. Yeah. So we figured yeah. we'd answer all of your questions. That's really what these yeah. product announcement live videos are about and I have only used the camera for a couple hours <laughs> in the <Yeah>. darkness <laughs> playing yes. with buttons um, where you've had a chance to actually shoot it and of course you got a lot of background with the camera yeah yes and, yeah. and here's the thing too so we uh, I just want to say right off the bat this is a first look I mean let's make that clear right yeah, I mean we will review. Re yeah we'll yeah, review we'll this camera when it comes out, but this is a first look. I know when we did the Nikon reveal, we got, you know, everybody's like, oh, that was a terrible review. It's because it wasn't a review, right? <laughs> this and is your opportunity at home to ask Trish questions. Yes, I know I keep yeah. talking to you, I'm not shutting up, that's what I do, but I'm also <laughs> gonna let Trish talk, talk. And a it, lot. And I'm just gonna say, you guys just put out the amazing 38 minute GH5 review just recently. And uh, so, you know, we can't be expected to have another one up and running right away, but right. it's something to look forward to. Exactly. Right? And we actually don't have that many cameras in Canada right now, but we're happy to have two of them right here at the oh camera store. Yeah. And yeah, if you can drop by later today, you'll get a, be able to get it in your hand and get a first look at it. So Oh, there excited. you go. Good to know. So yes, yes, you're gonna be here in the store. Oh yes, yeah, definitely. You can come in if you're in Calgary and have a look at this camera. Yeah, Very for sure, cool. pick it up. Um, you know, the feel of it is completely different. That's what people notice when you first pick it up and your impressions you know, when you yeah. first picked it up, we were the same as everyone. Yeah. It's got a really nice grip on Very it. Very deep, Good yeah. feel to it. Um, a lighter than GH5, yeah. um, which is something. Not with the 202.8 on well, there. No, no, yeah. it's pretty light, yeah. <laughs> so that's the other thing we announced today was this brand new uh, Leica 200 mil 2.8 lens, Very which is nice. going to be great, especially in this market for uh, wildlife shooters, sports shooters, that kind of thing. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Weather sealed, obviously. Yep, totally weather Crazy sealed. image. have a custom button on there. Yeah, yeah we've got a memory new. recall, we've got a function button that we can set up. Yeah. And uh, focus yeah. sensor. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it feels very much like a classic Panasonic Leica, mm -hmm. premium, super tight lens. Oh That's yeah, beautiful. and we've had so many customers asking for fast telephoto, so this is the answer to that. Um, right. People who want, um, if they, the one here, the 400, is a fabulous lens, it wildlife really is. kind of thing. So good. Um, but we just need something a little bit faster, so this there falls go. right in to the 2.8, and it ships with a 1.4 times teleconverter in the box. That's great. Exactly, which gets you to 280 millimeter or a 560 millimeter quick lens. So mm. right off the bat, we don't even have to go and buy an extra accessory. We just include Between it. this and the newly announced Hasselblad lenses, I'm just expecting every lens longer than maybe five millimeters to come shipped with this teleconverter <laughs> in the box. I think we should just log yeah. it. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> we should all start looking forward to it. So let's um, talk the GH5 we said in our review. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't get looked at quite as much that way, but it's a very fully featured photo camera. Exactly. Uh, right. But yeah, so but you're right. Nobody are, considers. How are you differentiating this from yeah. the GH5? So we've had a lot of customers to come out and say, "Hey, I love the GH5. However, it has too many premium video features that I don't need because I'm a field shooter." Right. So this camera is the answer to those customers. Mm. Uh, this was camera was engineered to be Panasonic's pro um, line of mirrorless cameras. So it's the fancy new red racing stripe. Yeah, everybody's got to pick a color. Yes, oh yeah, nice exactly. cherry red. So yeah. that is going to donate, uh, denote our new pro line of cameras. Uh -huh. um, so this is the first in our skill series. And there's a lot of things different about this. I mean, just looking at it, the first thing you see is the big status LCD screen on the top. So it's something we have never had in any mirrorless camera before. So this is something totally new. Yeah. And especially for DSLR shooters who are looking 
to make the switch just to make them feel a bit more comfortable right. um, about making the switch from um, their current gear. Yeah, I mean, it's not, I would still probably use the fully articulating mm -hmm. display, which is one of the strong things. Yeah. But it does mean that you, you can set this strictly to use the viewfinder, mm -hmm. and then you've still got a way of quickly checking settings it's weird. without using a ton yeah. of battery. I'm so yeah. not even used to seeing this here. Exactly, I, I, I didn't yeah. even, like, I don't even notice yeah. it. I'm like, oh, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's something there. Uh, so improvements over Gs5, there's actually quite a few that we did. The first one we want to talk about is burst mode because this mm -hmm. is what makes this camera perfect for wildlife and sport shooters. Right. The burst mode in um, mechanical shutter is the same as Gh5, so it's 12 frames a second single and 9 frames a second continuous. Gotcha. Yeah. What? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Did we switch the headphones like that? That was the mistake last year. No, 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 no. Oh, oh last year. Is it, was audio working? Audio was working. Uh oh. Is it that we got flagged because of Shaggy back here? <laughs> 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 I don't think so. Uh, audio was working, but it was saying that our upload was cut. Okay, guys, uh, okay. just bear with that us. That or cut out? Crank it. We well can we do. We're gonna do charades. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think we. I think we need to. Okay. Well, I think we need to start learning sign language, and yes. we can always yes. just break right over to it, <laughs> or subtitle instead of subtitle. We'll let Google try to figure that out for us. Uh, <laughs> well, let's keep going. I mean, as long as people can hear, Drew is going to madly solve this. Yeah. Uh, or crank our levels or something like that. We should mention we don't have our usual crew here, so mm. Drew is doing the work of what is usually three or four people this yes, morning. There's and one he person got up early to come in for this. He so did, which we really you, appreciate. Well, let's thank not you. give him too hard a time. Uh, <laughs> he'll figure it out. Yeah. He's, he plays a lot of video games. <laughs> he'll figure it out. The he's a Twitch star. I'm sure it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Yay! So, so there you go. I'm going to go back to talking about the burst mode. Yeah, talk about the burst about. mode. Okay, so again, in mechanical shutter, same as GH5. However, in electronic shutter, we now have 60 frames a second in single autofocus and 20 frames a second in continuous that autofocus with no blackout. That's the important thing. Actually, I did want it. I so I did yeah. want to talk about that. So absolutely no blackout. Nope. Right. So yeah. the the viewfinder is talking to the sensor at 120 frames a second. So even when you're shooting at 60 frames, it's still reading all the information. Right. So you're not no blackouts. Plus, it's an OLED viewfinder, um, which has a faster refresh rate than LCD. So again, right. no issues with blackout. Right. We should talk about the viewfinder while we're on this topic, yeah. because this is probably one of the biggest changes that we have here. Yeah. Um, first off, massive. Yeah, not uh, only the look of it, if yeah. you turn it, the, you know, totally yeah. different look to it. But big, big eye cup. Yeah, yeah. big eye cup. Um, but now it has three different magnification modes. Yeah. So it's 0 0.7, 0 0.77, and 0.83 that you can quickly change through with a little button on the side of the yeah. viewfinder. I'm just pushing right now. Screen. And it is just like a digital crop, but I mean, you got yeah. tons of resolution to spare. I'm not really noticing any difference. Yeah. It's all nice and clear. But if you don't wear glasses, I think, what's the mag 0.83? Or something like that? Would be 0.83. 0.83. Yeah. Yeah. So you're getting this huge, beautiful corner to corner sharpness. I yeah. can see everything. I don't have to move my eye around. No. But yeah, if you have uh, glasses or something, you can just yeah. reduce it to your preference. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to have that. Now, is that a button we can customize if we're oh, always going to be living at 0.83? Well, you just put it on 0.3 and leave it, and then it'll always stay on that setting. So you don't right. have to keep changing it. Now, is it possible that I can? set that to be something else as well if I'm always yeah I have beautiful glorious <laughs> vision I can always use this at point three. now yeah, someone yeah. Uh, Drew I know he's uh, he's doing our thing but he also has to not do another job he has to open the door for yeah, staff that are coming uh -oh. in the door <laughs> so we're gonna let staff in because they're really upset they're like why are they letting us in here but yeah. it'll it'll be fine poor Drew today we did I not think some <laughs> what, whatever but the other news about the viewfinder while we're on that mm -hmm. is that there's a night mode for both the viewfinder and the LCD screen oh okay so Tell when us about you're that. shooting shooting outdoors, it actually changes it into kind of like an infrared so that you don't ruin your night vision by looking through the viewfinder or the LCD screen. So you Smart. get rid of that brightness. Yeah. So this camera from start to finish has been geared toward people like wildlife shooters who are out in all kinds of weather right. and night all different night photographers, like all that kind of thing to, to do that. Very um, cool. So beyond the burst mode, the other thing that's upgraded from GH5 is the autofocusing speed. So now a uh, 0 0.04 second speed, uh, GH5 is 0 0.05, so definitely a little, <laughs> little bit faster. I'll notice that. A little bit yeah. faster, you may, may notice it. 
um, but so quicker to lock on um, and a new uh, motion tracking vector as well that we're very happy to announce. Right. We spent a lot of time, the engineering team in Japan did a really great job of working on this. Mhm. It's called deep learning and what it is is the motion tracking vector is not only looking for eyes or a face, it's mhm. looking for a body. Hmm. So even if your subject's head is turned, it will still recognize the body and lock right. on. Right, and understand that's exactly. where you need to focus. Exactly, yeah. And that will make a ton of sen- sense for things like sports as well yeah. where you've got a helmet covering the exactly. face. So face detection right. is a huge use for it. But subject tracking can easily get confused because you've got a bunch of similar colored blobs running around. Yeah. Yeah. So Are we going to notice much difference <coughs> like point to point just with the standard DFD focus or is this primarily the continuous focus and speed that we're going to use? Uh, both. So the DFD has been improved again and mm-hmm. along with this motion tracking vector, it's not only looking at your subject's movement, but it's looking at their plane of movement. Mm-hmm. So you can set up up to four different um, continuous autofocusing modes that really look at what direction your subject is moving. Right. Is it coming straight at you? Is it ir- uh, you know, irregular, that kind of thing. Right. So you can customize your autofocus for any kind of shooting situation. <laughs> well, and I mean, I've never used the DFD in single point and been like, God, I wish yeah. this was a little no, faster. No, I, I still think it's probably the I fastest. Think Panasonic's yeah. main strength is in the single point. Yeah. But the continuous one thing I did notice, and again, I wasn't able to really extensively test it last mm-hmm. night, but I found with the GH5 a lot of the time when I'm using continuous tracking, the subject seems like it's out of focus in the viewfinder, and then I go back and review the images, and it's bang on consistently, mm-hmm. yeah. where I was seeing less of that effect with this new mm-hmm. camera, mm-hmm. which I'm guessing is due to the zero blackout. Yes, yeah, exactly. If I use mechanical shutter, will it be qu- more similar to the GH5, or will we still see some of those autofocus improvements? Uh, it will be similar to the GH5, however, we should see those autofocus improvements, whether it's in mechanical or electronic shutter. Mm-hmm. Um, And not only the autofocusing for regular stills, but also in 4K and 6K photo, Mm -hmm. the autofocusing has been improved. So as you're shooting at 60 frames a second burst in 4K photo, um, you will not get as many missed shots. So it will be tracking your motion all the time. So you get less less drops. Very nice. Again, yeah, this is something we're going to want to test extensively with this new lens when it comes out. But yeah, so clearly aimed at journalists, wildlife photographers, sports photographers, gotcha. And I mean, the other big improvement from GH5 is the dual IS has been improved, the Mm -hmm. body stabilization. Yeah, and this we want to talk about quite a bit. Um, So again, just for anybody who's tuning in now, I know it's a little bit late. Uh, If you're coming in right now, this is a preview. We're looking at the Mm -hmm. Panasonic G9. And uh, yeah, so far talking about autofocus, much improved. Yep. Yes. Tell us about the image stabilization. So with the GH5, the body stabilization uh, was working at a five stop shutter speed reduction. So this now has been improved and it's now a six and a half shutter sp- yeah. uh, stop shutter speed reduction. So we were actually having people shooting at a half a second handheld with GH5, which is pretty incredible. Right. So now this should be able to go beyond that. <laughs> exactly. Which just seems right? so Which strange. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, G eighty five I even found half second yeah. was possible. Yeah. GH five was really yeah. nice. So yeah. even more improved than that. Yeah. Does that put this uh, on par as the best image stabilization built in sensor? So I mean far? numerically that's numerically what yes. Yes. Well. yeah. Yeah. Um, I really want to go and test how well that works for video. I'll just I'll show the people at yeah. home right now. Oh it's so good. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. It's too bad you can't see this through the camera. Oh, it's. If only we had. Oh, you're missing out. You're missing out so much. It it really is very impressive. And I mean, you know, we've seen this on the Olympus uh, OMD and One Mark Two in a a similar way. But um, yeah. One other thing that we do definitely want to touch on is Panasonic has now joined the ranks of people who are doing a high res image stacking mode. Yeah. Yeah. So that was going to be my next point. So this is first for us. We kind of looked at the Olympus as a benchmark, but we said we got to do better than that. So (laughs) no no offense. uh, Question from John. He's wondering how you feel this camera's autofocus stacks up against the Olympus. Uh, We haven't tested it head to head yet. Um, but Stay the tuned. one, yeah, that might yeah, be a shootout. is shootout. Yeah, but the one thing we have going for is our five-core processor in here, mm-hmm. which is very fast, and because it can handle the speeds of the 4K 60, it also, um, you know, affects your autofocusing speed. So that's how it can be that much mm-hmm. faster and more accurate. Yeah, yeah, I think this is one thing we're definitely going to have to actually mm-hmm. take it out, yeah. field yeah. test yeah. it. Um, But my impressions from before when we did our EM-1 too is we were able to get very similar performance out of a Panasonic G85. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Now Mm -hmm. you don't have as many 
little focus points lighting up and things yeah. like that as on the Olympus, but the tracking yeah. was very accurate. Yeah. So yes. uh, I'm hoping that we're going to see, you know, if we mm -hmm. do see a dramatic improvement, mm -hmm. this may be the best Micro mm -hmm. Four Thirds focusing exactly. camera. It's just too early to say. Yeah. yeah. The, the one thing I want to say there too is, um, I mean, the, the EM1 Mark II is very, very fast, very technologically advanced camera. I do prefer the Panasonic 4K and 6K photo modes just mm -hmm. because they don't have, you know, for the buffering, for yeah. the pre burst because yeah. right. yeah. you don't have that slowdown that the Olympus has mm -hmm. it really gets very choppy when you're trying to mm -hmm. to track your subjects and that made it very difficult to actually follow your action yeah. Yeah. whereas of course here it just looks nice yeah. and smooth so exactly. i would say if you are going to do the 6k modes and the 4k modes that's a nice yeah. improvement with the now, oh sorry um one thing a lot of people are going to say is why don't we just use the 6k recording it's 18 megapixels mm -hmm. what are the advantages to just taking the photo with the electronic shutter with this besides two megapixels yeah so two things so using a burst mode uh, with regular photo modes you get the um, faster burst yeah. obviously uh, but you get raw as well as JPEG right so when you're shooting 6k photo yes you can shoot at 30 frames a second and you're getting 18 megapixel but they are JPEGs, JPEGs. only right the advantage to that though is it goes through um, a separate noise reduction uh, mm -hmm. algorithm which actually gives you less noise shooting at uh, 6k 18 megapixel than you would at 20 megapixel oh, in okay. regular burst mode. So that's something to, to try. We yeah. have had. So uh, if you don't want to process that yes, much, 6K yeah. might be the way to go. Exactly. You go. But if exactly. you want to take the time, you get yeah. access to the raw files. Yeah. How is the uh, electronic shutter raw compared to the mechanical shutter? Has anyone done any tests there yet? No. It, honestly, we've just had the cameras in the country mm. for um, a few days, actually, and yeah. came out here. But we do have some shooters all around mm. the world that work for Panasonic that have been putting this through the paces, and we're going to get some first reports of um, you know uh, resolution hmm. all kinds of functionality and everything very soon now when it comes to image quality just you know I know it's pre-pro still you know there's a media yeah. sample same sensor as the GH5 yes but you have changed the processing engine as far as JPEGs go anyways, yes, right? What's yeah. been done there? So this is a new Venus engine that we have in here, um, and then same processor as GH5. So we have done um, several tweaks to make it, you know, better than GH5 in some ways, but that's not to say GH5 is right. bad. It's still that pinnacle of everything for video and stills, but we have done some tweaks to make this more attractive for still shooters. So you're going to get better organic look with the G9. Yeah. You're yes. going to get better low light performance yes. in JPEG yeah. mode yeah. than the yeah. G9. Yeah. Are we? Do you think we're going to see any differences when it comes to raw photography processing between the two cameras? Um, so this has a raw buffer of around 60 frames. Okay. Uh, so it's a little bit uh, more than GH5. A so you'll deeper. be able, yeah. yeah. So you'll yeah. be able to shoot more in that burst mode than you would with GH5 and stills. Cool. Yeah. Uh, triple cool. questions. Yeah. Please. We should jump yeah. On those. Go for it. Yeah. We have a few people wondering if it has weather sealing. Yes, fully yeah. weather sealed and also freeze proof to minus 10. Now that's just the engineer's limit. I've actually shot GH5 in minus 35 degrees Celsius and not had any issues with it. Right. So this weather sealing and holds we up will great. <laughs> yeah, because yes, it's always so minus here in 35. Alberta, we have those weather conditions. That, oh, yeah. uh, I can you know, see we've got definitely. rubber gaskets. Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah. Yeah, very well yeah. sealed. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the Panasonic GH line was incredible. It had a yeah. reputation for really being able to take a beating. We can attest to that. Oh, yeah. So this yes. is the same. Our GH5s time. have stood up to quite a bit. And you're going to give us yeah. a brand new G9 to torture test, right? <laughs> Of Trish, course, like you just yeah. you do terrible yeah. things to it. I mean, I dropped my GH5 off a rock the first time I had it and just picked it up and kept shooting. So, you know, they stand, stand a lot. It's a magnesium alloy body, same as GH5, and very, very durable. I can attest to that for sure because I drop all my cameras. You I'm do. Very and you actually, I'm very klutzy. And you should check yeah. out Trish's Instagram. We'll get your Instagram up there in a bit. But um, yeah. check out Trish's Instagram because you take beautiful photos. Oh, thanks. No, it's thanks. true. You know, I, I would say the large majority of our photo reps don't take pictures very often, no, you no, know. No, but, but they've soured on the <laughs> yeah, but you but you actually enjoy doing it, right? I love so it. so and suffice I love to say using our gear, yeah. suffice and to say you take it all around yes, the world, yes, many different locations. Yes, yeah, yeah, and you, you certainly torch test these. And one of the things that I guess is a kind of a big touch point right now, a lot of people are talking about is the lack of female photographers in the industry. Sure. Um, and how they're not getting represented. Well, I like Chris said, I take pictures with all our gear. You do. I use it. Beautiful I love pictures. It, and you know, I'm out there promoting it all the time. And not just because it's my job, it's because I love it. You actually love yeah, doing it. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. What else uh, we got coming in there, Drew? Uh, Bit is wondering if uh, it can shoot 25 and 50 feet. Uh, the reviews he sees only clip 
For video. I believe this is the, a world cam, the right? The European versions. I think there's a special European version. Oh. Um, it may not be multi um, format like the GH5. Let's I see if this is a world yet. cam. Yeah. You guys carry on, and I will get okay. to the bottom of this. But while Jordan's checking that, I just want to quickly go back to the high res shot, which we didn't have time to finish. So it's actually um, using sensor shift, it's taking eight photos in succession to give you an 80 megapixel raw and right. 80 megapixel JPEG photo in camera. Okay, at the same yep. time, beautiful. Yes. And you can reduce that to half if you want. Is that right? Is there a lower, uh, lower megapixel no, version? No, oh, so okay. it's 80, 80. Okay. And then, and but it has to be done on tripod, obviously, because of, of the eight pictures. And there's about a 10 second gap between the shots, each one. So uh, oh, it's very okay. quick, but it does okay. require use of a tripod. Okay, yeah. of course, yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. for landscape photographers who want that extra, you know, sharpness and everything, I think this is going to be a big hit with that. And I think one thing too to mention as well about that. So you know, this multi-shot stuff is becoming more and more common. Mm -hmm. The Panasonic G9 does do all that processing in camera, which is nice. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to get these files going to post, use, yeah. you know, proprietary yeah. software yeah. And, and stick it all very, together. Very easy well, to I, use. I find yeah. it incredibly useful because you can run into issues with motion, like, oh, are those trees going to look okay in the high res? Yeah, and you get home and it's... When we look at something like the Sony implementation, you're not going to know until you get yeah. home that screwed things up. Where mm -hmm. with this, you can quickly zoom in, zoom check in, it, make like, sure oh, yeah, it yeah, yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah we, I'm eager to see how that'll handle motion and things like that too, for sure. Definitely. I don't believe we have a world cam here. No, it's a, yeah. Yeah, so North it is PAL or NTSC. Yeah. On a completely different note, uh, Tom is wondering if the G9 will be compatible uh, with 43 format lenses. You mean four thirds? I'm guessing that's what he means, yes. Uh, <laughs> there, there is an adapter. If yep. you still have yes. some of those kicking around, yes. <laughs> um, you will not be getting the most out of this technology. <laughs> the... Yes. But you can. But I mean, the adapters can. work. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. always been one of our favorite things about mirrorless. Email. Is yes. Email. Yeah, there's so much lenses that to choose from. You know, not only Panasonic lenses, but Olympus as well, and anything with a micro four thirds mount. And we have a lot of customers who use adapters and of shoot course. with their own glass. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we're on a Sigma 1835 on yep. an adapter yeah. right now. So. <laughs> now, just holding it right now, and, and when we, we actually did get to see some early versions of this camera. Yes. But I mean, it was yeah. all like weird rubber and yeah. like not yeah. finished and stuff. So It felt like someone 3D printed it. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It really, it really did. Yeah, it, it really did. But I mean, um, we do have a different control structure here. Hey, I mean, I think we should mention that. Uh, not just the top LCD. Yes. Um, I do like these buttons, white balance, ISO, and, and exposure comp. Very similar mm -hmm. to the GH5, but they're yes. red. Yes, yeah, so they're actually different heights. So yeah. when you have the camera up to your eye, just by feel, you can tell which is your white balance, your ISO, and they your exposure They totally, comp. one's got and little bumps the on yeah, it, little one's one low, has, one's high. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. So that's... Uh, Record button here, put in a way where you're not ever going to accidentally yeah. hit it. Yeah. Um, I, I got to mention, you know, this is an incredible stills camera, but hey, guess what? We put 4K60 in it as well. So, so yeah. Now, yeah. Shoot 4K60 video. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. funny. A lot of it, like I wasn't expecting them to still include a Mike headphone jack. jack, headphone jack. Yeah. A full-size HDMI port is still yeah. on this guy. Uh, I am curious. Um, this has the little loop there, the locking pin. Will this support the XLR adapter, the XLR one? Uh, actually, I haven't tried yet. I so don't know. I don't see the question. connection. I don't think it will. I don't think it has the extra pin no. right. for the uh, XLR. OK, so that would just be a lock for yeah. the plus. We're going to yeah. test that, but my guess is probably no. Yeah. Okay. And, and we should also say no log, no vlog. No vlog. Yeah, no vlog yeah. here. Record limit on the video. Yes, so right. a shooting 4K 60, it's a 15-minute limit. OK. Um, and when you're shooting 4K and 6K photo, you have about a 10 to 15-minute limit of continuous shooting. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, but we do have some great accessories for this. So one of them uh, is the battery grip. So again, fully weather sealed, compatible with G9. You can put um, an extra battery in here to get twice the battery life. Uh, and again, before. should just mention the same battery yeah, as the same GH5. Same battery as GH4, yeah. GH5. Yeah. Um, the one new thing about this though is the charging mechanism. So it is a USB power charge. Okay. Um, and you get two things in the box. One, you get the standard USB cable with wall adapter. And the other thing is you get a quick charge unit. Okay. So you have options to charge. You can charge through your laptop or any USB power pack, oh, okay. or you can charge through the wall using the uh, USB or quick charge. And that and is one of the new features here, that you can yes. power the camera while you're shooting. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. out in the field, if you want to use a USB power pack, and you can keep continuous battery going. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's really important, like often when I'm traveling, 
just being able to, you know, when you're in the car or whatever, quickly get 10, 20% on the battery yep. is a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so it's really nice to see that on a camera like this. And I honestly, I wish we had this when I was out in Mongolia because we were in the far, far, far reaches You don't just have like 110 desert. volts every, behind no, every rock there's in there? No, no electricity, no power. And, you know, I had to take about six batteries with me, which is a little tricky going through Asian airport security because they're yeah, really anti-battery. Yeah, they're getting pretty specific. Battery. Yeah, they really are. So they really scrutinize everything. But having a USB power pack that I could have just mm. used out in the field would have Solar powered been. yurts. Yeah. That's what it's we a, need. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. something Solar that the yurts. Mongolians have really developed a reputation for is having porter, portable USB battery power. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. You know, while I'm on my camel, yeah. uh, just plug into my USB power pack. Just plug into the thing. camel. Yeah, keep why not? Going. <laughs> So let's talk about the lens a little bit as well. Sure. And I just want to mention, so the oh, other sorry. thing, optional accessory yeah, we Jordan. have for the lens is we're also going to be selling a 2.0 times teleconverter oh, as an okay. optional accessory. So this gets you to the equivalent of 800 millimeters at a 5.6. What kind of compatibility? Do we know what lenses it will and will not work with? Right now, it's only going to work with the 200 Kay. millimeters. So if you want to take that off for a sec and we can show that there's actually, it's concave in here right, to right. fit that. So like an icon or Canon, it has to exactly, have Exactly, so it has to have that to be able to use it. So for right now, for Lumix, this is the only um, lens we have that the telecom will work 400 is with. not going to. No, but okay. it's that already gets you to 800 millimeters uh, right now, so. Exactly, yeah. cool. And that is, I think if you look at a lot of the telephoto designs, specifically the 35 to 100, comparing it to the Olympus, mm -hmm. that's a big part of why we see that size yeah. difference there. Mm -hmm. Olympus does have that design, they're bigger lenses, mm -hmm. but except a telecom converter where if portability is key then mm -hmm. the Panasonic that is one of the beauties beautiful thing. I do want to mention really quick just before we move on um, the controls on the back of this camera have changed a little bit I mean we've got yes. the joystick control which is fantastic yeah. Yeah. I love the you know the uh, single focus continuous focus selectors there this dial is nice on the back and if you're a Canon user you're gonna like that they've moved the finger dial to the top mm -hmm. here but for Nikon users, Panasonic users, it's weird that it's not here it's just, anymore. Yeah, it's just getting used to it. Muscle memory is still going to the very front, but yeah. now you have to move back a bit. But the dials do feel very positive. They've got a nice yeah. feel soft, to them. Yeah, yeah. another soft turn. quality back clicky dial. Yes. This is the year yes. everyone yeah. is yeah. making back much clicky better dial. things. <laughs> and I know you can't feel this or re you know, really appreciate it at home, but the shutter mechanism, I. I, I want to play with this when it comes in because I got to say uh, oh, it's I'm it's at a very delicate press to get it to focus, and it'll fire oh, before you mode. even know it. What are you doing? It'll <laughs> fire before you even know it. So I would say it's a very soft shutter. It's very soft. Listen, yeah. Listen, everyone. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, so it's it's barely a full press <laughs> in this camera fires. You feel anything. You're going to yeah. take a lot of pictures without wanting or knowing that you did, I think. Yes, yeah. But if you're doing the slow shutter speeds with the yes, image stabilization, yeah. you're not going to get any sort of move with your finger. But yeah, it takes some getting used to. And the new high res mode plus HDR has a shutter delay on it. Yes. So when you push uh, the yeah. tripod, hit the shutter, you can set it for as many seconds as you want so you don't get any camera shake yeah. in there. This is handy too. We've now yeah. got the, the dual new. user mode kind of yes. thing here, right? So you can yeah. customize the camera to do two different kinds of functions. Yeah. Menu, everything controls, yeah. everything yes. set it up, custom features, and then you can simply click back and forth. Yeah, and quickly switch between two completely different shooting modes. Gotcha. Yeah. And then, sorry, I was gonna say the other new thing is the new dial here. It's actually a dual mode. So the top, you have all your aperture, shutter, yep. manual priority, and then on the bottom is your drive mode dial. So that's right. where you have your single burst. Yeah, your burst modes, your 4K, 6K photo, Post -focus, time lapse, all that kind of everything, stuff, yeah. yeah. And a couple more customized user modes there as well. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it's really smart how it's set up right out of the box where you've got mechanical on one part of the dial, electronic on the other. Uh, I do find a lot of the time when I set up to start shooting, it's like, click, oh damn, this yeah. is a silent shooting yeah. situation. Yeah. You don't right. go to the menu. The menu. Yeah. You just sure. flip yeah. the switch and you're back. Yeah. But as usual, you could set it up for landscape features versus portrait yeah. features yeah. or yeah, you yeah, anything yeah. you want. Right? Yeah. If yeah. you're going to pass the camera back and forth with another person, customize yeah. it for mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, we also do have dual SD card slots on this one, same as GH5. Yes. And UHS2. They're both UHS2. You both UHS2, yeah. Um, yeah, so you can do several different things with that. You can do relay recording. So when one card's full, it switches to the other card and you can hot swap and keep shooting and shooting and shooting. Um, you can do backup recording, so you can be shooting um, a complete backup on the second card, or you can do allocation, so you can actually do one for RAW, one for JPEG, right. uh, so different things, one for And we got a PC video. port too. Yes. Yeah, Drew, any other it. questions? Yeah. Probably lots, let's let people ask questions. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, how does the G9 handle uh, long exposure in low light, specifically? In low light? Yeah. 
Uh, well, there's the same noise reduction feature that we've had on all of our um, older model, uh, no, previous models, I'm going right. to say, mm -hmm. that you can use to reduce noise when you're shooting. Um, in low light, though, because of the new body stabilization, you will be able to do a bit more handheld than you would with previous models. Um, but people who want to shoot on tripod, uh, yeah. you still have great yeah. I still don't range. think we're going to see a substantial low light ISO performance improvement over I, the change five, yeah. right? Think, like yeah, it's we're still basing yeah. it on the same sensor. Yeah. yeah. One thing I am curious about with those pixel shift modes on a lot mm -hmm. of these cameras, mm -hmm. that does tend to reduce noise mm -hmm. in a big way. Mm -hmm. So that's certainly something that we'll be looking to test. Mm -hmm. But again, we haven't had a chance to, you know, even process the raw files from yeah. this camera, yeah. Yeah. let alone go out and actively yeah. field test it. I got it late last night. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and, and sorry, sorry, sorry yeah. just on that topic, how, again, how, how much time, if I am doing a pixel shift, how mm -hmm. much time from start to finish does that take? It took probably, um, a, I'm going to say about 45, 50 seconds. To uh, actually roughly. take the four to, photos? To, to, to took all the eight photos. Oh, eight um, photos. Yeah, ah, it just okay. one shutter press and let it go and it takes right. everything. And then it, depending on the speed of your card, again, um, you know, you have to have a fast SD card to be able to right. write fast because that's going to slow you down if your card is not um, up to the speed. Gotcha. But that could be an issue if you are trying to do star trails and things like that. It yes, might be too yeah. much time. You might start to get little weird movements and stuff like yeah, that. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. People are uh, wondering which lenses the teleconverter is going to be compatible with. Right. And oh, so we far, yeah, yeah, we did. But let's do it again. So far, just that 200 mil f2.8. Yes. Yeah. 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 And we do have a full line of weather sealed lenses, so it's not just this one that uh, you can use with the G9. Uh, we have about six or seven weather sealed lenses, so you have a full range of options from wide to telephoto to gotcha. use with this body. Kay. Yeah. That's all I got. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, yeah, fair enough. Easy, easy, easy. A lot of extra there. <laughs> yeah. I just want to talk about pricing and availability yeah, because I'm sure that's something that a lot of people want to know. So the G9 will be $22.99 for body only. Uh, we're not selling it in any lens kit. It's being sold as body. Okay. And it will be available very, very early January. So it's up for pre-order on the camera store website right now. So you okay. can place your pre-order or come mm -hmm. in the store, uh, see it today and, and place a pre-order for it. Uh, the lens is $38.99 and will be available end of January. Okay. Now I just want to talk about weight. So the lens is 1,245 grams. Uh, and now you guys know some of other manufacturers what their 400 mil 2.8 <laughs> equivalent lens weighs a heck of a lot more than that. For sure. So for people who are out in the field shooting, you now have this ability to take very light gear with you, and very minimal gear to get yeah. those same great shots you're expecting. We, it is it is good. I mean, we are noticing, and of course, you can get an equivalency. So we're not going to do that right now. But certainly. You have a camera that will give you full res images on yeah. target yeah. at the distances that you would normally have to carry a giant lens yeah. um, with very fast focusing. And we're noticing a lot of wildlife photographers are starting to take these out, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know Joe mm -hmm. Desjardins is kind of playing yeah. with it. And yeah, he'll be in later today uh, if anyone's coming by the store yeah, to Joe see Joe Desjardins him. is a very, very uh, accomplished uh, nature and wildlife photographer yes. here in the Alberta region. And he's very excited because a lot of the things that he's doing, he's having to hike in, you know, he was saying, you know, 10, Huge 15 kilometers to get the shot. And who wants to carry 35 pounds? gear on your back you don't exactly. um, you want something much lighter to carry around yeah so this does represent a, a very interesting package that you can take all the stuff out and get those shots i have a question actually about burst shooting um i know when i was playing with the mark the, the olympus uh m1 mark ii mark ii mark ii um it took uh, too many numbers it took too many photos <laughs> it, it shot so quickly um, and it was it was quite difficult to have to navigate that afterwards and i mean okay. like bringing to the point where these cameras shoot so fast yeah um, can you set up, do you know if you can set up separate file structure, like folders, so that if you are burst shooting, it's all located in one area per press? Um, I mean, I would do one SD card for your burst modes and right. then one for just regular. Um, but the good thing about the burst is you have different options. So as I was mentioning, 4K and 6K photo. Um, takes a predefined burst if you want. Yes. So if you're worried about space on your SD card, you can do what one of my things that I love is 4K and 6K pre-burst. I do pre-burst all the time. Too, I yeah. love that. So with one shutter press, you get 30 frames before the shutter was pressed and 30 frames after the shutter. Okay. So 60 frames, one shutter press, and now you have pretty much everything that you need to mm. get the shot you wanted, and you're not using a ton of space on the card. That right. would be nice actually just using this click mode and have it go yeah. Go to slot yeah. two in burst mode, yes. you know, for mechanical twenty frame per second or whatever, yeah. or well, yeah. electronic, yeah. and get that shot that way. That makes yeah. sense. And then at least yeah. you know they're all in one card, as opposed to you've got a thousand images interspersed with all your, 
you know, because I'm yeah. trying to go through all this wildlife stuff or whatever. Like, where's yeah. that picture that I took of the sunset? Uh, yeah. You know, and you have to fold through no, all these pictures. So. And this way, you know, as you're waiting for that optimal moment to happen, you don't have to just keep shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and wasting space in your right. card. Right. You wait for it. As you're seeing it with your eyes, you're pressing the shutter, and you know that catching those 30 frames beforehand, you're actually going to get the movement and get right. the motion. Yeah. Got a couple more questions. Please. Sure. Yeah. Um, this is a question that's popped up about 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a GH5, do you need a G9? That's a good and question. What, it depends what you're using it for. Um, if you have a GH5 for stills, uh, this has a few features that uh, weren't on the GH5, as we mentioned earlier, you know, faster burst modes, uh, better autofocusing, and the 80 megapixel high res. Right. If you're using it for video, then obviously yeah. uh, you wouldn't want yeah. it to switch. I think the big changes that I would notice, I mean, I like the burst mode on the GH5. Certainly there's an improvement here, uh, quite a big improvement. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to come down to the better image stabilization and body will be a yeah. big one. Um, the bigger viewfinder, I think, is going to be yeah. nice. And then that pixel shift technology. Yeah. You yeah. know, If you're doing landscape or something like that, definitely this might be a nicer camera for you. And the, the body, the G9, is actually smaller and lighter than GH5. So we did have people who are used to small mirrorless cameras saying GH5 was a little too big for them. I may have said that once or twice. Well, yeah, yeah. that's okay. But <laughs> I find <laughs> I find the G9 very comfortable. Like I said, the deeper grip than the GH5. It really does feel very and good. very yeah. lightweight for everything that's packed in there. So, you know, it's no problem carrying two bodies and Whoa, two lenses with you. almost dropped your very expensive ones. Like that. <laughs> well, that'll be $38.99, please. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, the bosses will cover you a discount. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so cycling through here, one thing I did notice that was kind of interesting is we have um, a donut delivery. Oh, yes, yeah. that's interesting. So come by later today. We have donuts from you brought donuts, jelly oh, modern donuts and coffee. Donuts, two hundred mil, two donuts, eights, and a new camera. I know camera. You can't beat that. You know? Drew, what was our other question? <laughs> Uh, was, yeah. Oh, sorry, Jordan's still talking. Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say really quickly, one thing I did notice is we now have preset slow motion recording with it, um, as opposed to the variable frame rate mode from the GH5 where yeah. you can dial it in. Um, remember we said the GH5 records its best quality up to 120, which mm -hmm. isn't a selectable option on this. So just bear that in mind. Mm -hmm. right. If you're not concerned about the audio and everything, but you want to do it as a mm -hmm. photo camera, yeah. if you're going to do some slow-mo, the GH5 does still definitely have some right. advantages yeah. that way. Sorry, Drew. No ahead. worries. Uh, Andres from Spain is mm -hmm. wondering, he says there's a noticeable instability in shadow tonality when you shoot time lapses. Has this been addressed in the G9? Mm. Good question. Uh, again, I don't know 100%. We have uh, people out testing them now, and a lot of those first reviews will be coming back um, right. with their insights on... But that's going to address yeah. I mean, something yeah, we want exactly. to look for in the future. Yeah, yeah just testing if, uh, yeah. if we get any sort of changes in yeah. shadow yeah, detail Yeah, we're starting to see some cameras that will do an exposure ramping for yeah. you, yeah. Uh, which we haven't seen in the panties yet, but yeah. certainly that's something we'll take a look yeah. at when we do the full review. And to do time-lapse on these cameras, most of our Lumix cameras is very simple. We actually have yeah. a mode right on the dial right now that you just set it in time-lapse. You don't need an intervalometer. Okay. Um, you just set up, you put in how many shots you want the duration in between each shot and let it go and you know it's so easy and then once it's done it just asks you do you want to Make you know sure. merge it and yep. do it all in camera well and i gotcha. really love that yeah. i'm a person who still builds my time lapses manually but i love it as a preview when i'm out in the field like is this even worth me bringing it home right. building a time lapse mm -hmm. i can yeah. just say like oh that's kind of cool i'll hang on to it or like that was garbage let's start another one yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, question from someone who <laughs> uh, why no phase detect? Well, all the Panasonic Lumix cameras are all contrast autofocus, which is actually a very accurate system, um, and combined with our DFD autofocusing, uh, very fast and very accurate. So it's we have never had phase detect in um, our cameras, but if you look at all the engineering graphs that they put out, um, actually contrast is usually more accurate than phase detect over the long run. Yeah, what, I mean, what a lot of the hybrid systems let you get is a very smooth transition um, in focus. And, and I do want to mention that, so the G9, um, it seems to have better, smoother 
transitional focus, like for video, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. um, something that Jordan, I know on the GH5, he's like, oh, you know, yeah. this is still not quite yeah. where I want it. Well, the um, biggest um, autofocus video snob in the world, our friend Rishi, said that this is quite improved. So. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I mean, if Rishi yeah. says, like... Rishi from it's, DP it's, Review. If he yeah. says anything other than, like, only manually focus, then it's a it's a dramatically improved. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if we'll get to see that algorithm in the GH5, I doubt it. But, you know, but interesting enough. So, but at least yeah. you're, you're working on rectifying that issue yeah. and getting oh, better, yeah. uh, better yeah. autofocus, so yes. And now this has 225 autofocusing points, so similar to what the GH5, so you actually have more accurate autofocus. Mm. Yeah, yeah like very small points, very precise. Yes. If you yeah. Before it was kind of pinpoint AF, or yeah. you were using those larger points. So yeah. it is nice to be able to. Can I still do the custom autofocus where I can draw exactly, mm -hmm. so I can make a happy face yes. and it will focus yeah, on the happy face? Yes, you can focus on that, yes. Happy yeah. face. Things like that. Important <laughs> it's actually very <laughs> terrible array for any sort of real life focusing, but you can make a happy face. So that does bring me to: Is this a different processor in this camera than the GH? Is that why we're seeing same processor but different same, engine? Yeah, different, different engine. engine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, so we yeah. may or may not see some of these features in the GH because I know personally I'd love to see the night vision mode. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I want yeah. I want GH5 okay. updates. Just yeah. be a software <laughs> fix, as opposed yeah. to I can see some of the the limitations being because mm -hmm. it's optimized for photo mm -hmm. as opposed to video. Right. Now the yeah. other, hey John, <laughs> <laughs> everyone here knows me. Yeah, exactly. It's the bar for I cheers. spend I spend a lot of time here. Um, the other thing I want to point out is we have a, something new called um, autofocus point scope. Hmm. which magnifies up to 10 times. So if you want to zoom in to make sure the eye of the animal or the person you're shooting is in focus, you now have up to 10 times zoom. Hmm. So you very, very accurate. And you still have the focus peaking in manual focus that you did gotcha. before. Uh, and I mean, so these are high-res, beautiful OLEDs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, over a million dots, I think, on the back LCD. Yeah, and it's actually a 3.2-inch, so it's bigger than our Whoa. normal ones, same as H5. And we've added more white pixels to it so that it's easier to see outdoors huh. in bright sunlight conditions. You can't selfie with a 200 2.8? It's a, it's a, your arms aren't long enough, yeah. It's a little difficult. I think <laughs> story of my actually, life. that's something worth mentioning about the 200. You might actually be within the minimum focus there. I'm not sure, because it's quite close for um, a 400 <laughs> millimeter equivalent lens. I, I don't think so. <laughs> no, no. It's not no, doing no, it. Yeah, no. it, do, it doesn't even look like arms. a face. I think no. that's a mustache. All right, maybe yeah. I could selfie with that <laughs> camera lens. Oh, yeah, it's my mouth. <laughs> ah. Okay, yeah. I just don't don't, don't press the shutter. Never mind. <laughs> uh, people, Trish, if you want to plug your Instagram. Yes, please do. <laughs> sure. Trish uh, around the world. At Trish around the world, and it's hyphens underscore, in yeah. between. So at Trish underscore around underscore the underscore world. Yeah, this is so funny. Yes. We don't have robot this morning. I know. Yeah, yeah, my wife's not here to, to pop these things Jeez. in. Yeah. But yes, Trish around the world. I know yes. it's right there. But if you search for <laughs> Trish around the world, you'll find it. Or yeah. Trisha Gillings. Yes. G-I-L-L-I-N-G-S. Yeah. It is absolutely worth your time to look uh, look at this channel because yeah, you, have, you take way better photos than addict, I do. Yeah, I'm a So uh, I take a lot of shots. And that's why I love the mirrorless system because it is so small and compact Beautiful. and as I was mentioning we were in Mongolia this summer I was on a photo tour with uh, Kevin Pepper photography and everyone's luggage was overweight because they were all bringing their right, DSLR and mine I was the only one who was under the five pound or five kilo <laughs> carry-on <laughs> limit right and I had two GH5 bodies a 100 to 400 a 12 to 60 a 35 100 um, and an 8 to 18 so I nice. had uh, two bodies uh, six lenses lots of extra Man. batteries and I was still under five kilos and I actually got tired of paying for everyone else's overweight <laughs> luggage because we were splitting it and at the very end I said that's it all yeah. you guys you weigh your luggage separately I'm not paying for it anymore. Yeah. Mine's mine. I love your I love your channel. It's so good. Yeah. Mongolian people group. are beautiful. Um, I'm Ricky's is wondering uh, if he can use Zuko lenses on the camera. Zuko lenses. So yeah, that's that same that's that same thing. Zuko with uh, the Olympus four thirds uh, lenses. Again, with an adapter, you can. Yes. Uh, I don't think it's going to take advantage of all the full autofocus yeah. capability, yeah. but it's really interesting because you'll see some. Uh, you know, not too much of a degradation when you use Olympus glass on the Panasonic bodies because it's all contrast attacked. It's more when you go the other way that you see some restrictions. Yeah. So certainly drop them on. We use a 12 to 100 lens quite regularly. Um, some of those new yeah. one two lenses look excellent as well. So that's why you buy into Micro Four Thirds. It's mm -hmm. the most yeah. complete ecosystem for yeah. lenses right now. And if you are shooting wildlife and sports, you want to take advantage of the fast 
DFD, the fast autofocusing, right. uh, all the body stabilization. So those things are just going to make it easier for you to get the shots you want. Gotcha. So um, right. I am plugging our lenses, yes. Of but, course, uh, yeah. But it does yeah. have definite advantages. If you have a camera that's made for speed, you want to get the lenses that focus the quickest exactly, on that. Exactly. But of course, you can throw your manual focus stuff on there or use adapters and you can yeah. do yeah. multi-shot, pixel yeah. shift, all that kind of stuff yeah. Yeah. and still get hey, Ron. that way. Oh, hey. Hey Ron. Oh, yeah, Ron's, Ron has just Our found out that he's been replaced. Oh, has just walked no. in this morning. Yeah. <laughs> what else we have there, Drew? Uh, we have a few people wondering if this camera has a soul, uh, but other than that, yeah. not a whole lot. <laughs> the internet. I mean, Jeez. anything with a silent shutter has a soul. I think we've yeah. established that yeah. in yeah. previous episodes. You know what? I love silent shutter for street photography. It's great. Um, yeah. I'm not one of those brazen people who can just stick a camera in people's face. Um, so I love silent shutter for my surreptitious street photography. Well, sneaky shots? Let's yeah, my on, sneaky shots. <laughs> let's touch on that quickly because we've just had two cameras that have really pushed the silent shutter yeah. recently that have been very disappointing in their actual implementation. Mm -hmm. The 850, the A7R3, because it's so many pixels, such a big sensor, it takes so long to scan, the rolling shutter makes it basically mm -hmm. unusable yeah. for any yeah. moving subject. What is our rolling shutter like on here? Uh, it has been improved over GH5. No! What I'm told. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and the GH5 <laughs> was excellent. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We were kind of floored at how good that was for both photo and video. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, doing some quick tests. Again, my sleepy toddler test. Uh, <laughs> it looks quite good, but yeah. we're going to want to go shoot some actual sports oh, definitely. action. Definitely. Let's definitely. see. Hand test. Yeah. How's it look, Chris? Let's see. It looks like I'm using a 200 mil 2.8 <laughs> indoors in low light. <laughs> is what it looks like. I'm going to crank this up here. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to do a rolling shutter test <laughs> no right problem. now. No problem. Go for it. A uh, couple of other questions. I do want to say, too, I did just try to rub the front of the camera multiple times trying yeah, to get the I, aperture it's to change. It's the muscle memory. I it does you, not. Right? It does you not You just got to remember to move that finger back a little <laughs> bit for the aperture. Yeah. Uh, when you merge after you've taken multi-shot, does it save in raw as well? Yeah, so it's raw and JPEG. And you can actually pick... Do you want RAW only? Do you want JPEG only? Do you want RAW plus JPEG? What size JPEG do you want? So you have all those options when you set up the high res shot. Mm. So you can customize it however you want. Rolling shutter is still pretty bad. I got to be honest with you. Yeah. Now again, this is media sample pre-pro, but yeah. rolling shutter is there. It, it is still you definitely a see okay. it. Yep, you definitely see it. Okay, and we will test that more yeah. extensively when we get the production version. Uh, I just had something in mind and you totally Oh, that away from oh, yeah, yeah. But I totally blew it up with with absolutely poignant um, you know yeah, tests so that we yeah, know test. yeah you know so yeah. That we can say you you heard it here rolling shutters. Okay. <laughs> Anything else, there, Drew? Uh, there's a couple people wondering about uh, the face detect yes. during video. Okay, uh, I tested it for photo mode yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and it does seem to be quite a bit more responsive. Mm -hmm. um, I actually really liked the face detect interface that they've got. Um, but yeah, we're gonna wanna do some more tests. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, yeah. yeah, again, preview, everybody. Preview. If you're tuning yeah. in for the yes, last you know, right. five minutes or whatever, this is, this is a, a preview. Review. This is not a review. We've yeah. had just very little time <laughs> with this camera. <laughs> yes. This camera's yeah. just launched, but we, yeah. we appreciate that we get to actually play with it, feel it, and see it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely. We nice. actually just got our samples in Canada probably last week, I guess. So, uh, you know, this is great that it was in time and we can be here for the first For people look. tuning in late, what kind of release date are we looking at? Uh, early January for the camera, twenty two ninety nine for the body. Okay, and so lens. less than a GH5. Yeah, so ask less for than something GH5. else for Christmas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you can put your pre-order in in the store and on Camera Perfect. Store online and get those orders in. Um, and then the lens will be later in January, Kay. along with all the accessories, battery grip, uh, the extra teleconverter will be available late in January. And again, this isn't going to be available in a kit with the 12 to 60 lens. No, body right. only. Okay. Yeah. Body only. Uh, Gabriel wants me to ask about the G9 Olympus Pro Capture like feature. So the high res mode? Uh, yeah, he wants to know if it works on. Uh, well, yeah. well oh, Pro, the Pro, Pro Capture, yeah, okay. Pro okay. Capture is yeah. their high speed pre burst kind yeah. of buffer, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, 6K photo is very similar to it without the ability to capture RAW, which the Olympus has. Yeah. Or yeah. you can shoot conventionally with the electronic shutter, which will get you RAW, but you'll lose the pre-burst mode. Yeah. Um, but 
the Olympus pre -ca Pro Capture mode Pro Cap. was very laggy when yeah. it was actually active. Pro Cap has a shorter buffer depth yeah. and it's yeah. laggy. Yeah. yeah, but you are getting raw falls. So okay. yeah, you have a yeah. you have a benefit going either way. I would say the Panasonic 6K, 4K photo modes are way easier to use. Yes. Uh, way easier to, to get your timing and capture things, but JPEG only. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then the only slowdown in 4K, 6K photo is afterwards when it's writing to the card. Sure. So again, you need that faster speed uh, SD card to be able to write your files faster and keep shooting. Right. Yeah. I've actually, uh, this is a little bit off topic, but there's been three or four people who are wondering why you're wearing those red rose pins. Oh, Remembrance wow. Day. Oh, yeah, these are poppies. Yeah, That's so right. Everyone's not Canadian. Yeah, um, in North America with uh, Remembrance Day coming up. November 11th. Uh, we assemble, celebrate November 11th, so we do generally wear poppies. Yes. Uh, just as a sign of remembrance for our veterans. Yes. There you go. So Perfect. Sorry. No, I think I think we're doing great for time, anyways. Yes. Hey? Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions uh, for Trish, come down and see her in the yeah. store today. If you're yeah. in Calgary, come have a donut, play with the cameras, play yes. with the lenses, get yeah. a feel for them. Yeah, and Joe's gonna be here as well. Okay, Joe, Joe Desjardins. Desjardins. Okay. He's gonna come down. Um, he actually just got to see the camera yesterday, so it's a first time for him as well. Okay, but cool. but um, he's been testing the Micro Four Thirds Yeah, so he for used GH5, he loved it, and yeah. I think this is really what's gonna be that. This is right up his alley. Yeah, yeah, the thing that will push him away from other gear and into Micro Four Thirds, so there you go. <laughs> so yeah, so we're here between 11 and two. Perfect. We have donuts, we have coffee, we have cameras, uh, lots of experts to talk to, sure. so it'll be great. So awesome. And I know that we're recording in a regular time today, so yeah. we're gonna be extra vigilant once this goes live. If you have more questions, please drop them yes. in the YouTube we'll channel. Yes, we'll be here at work all day. Yeah. We will be answering those a little more aggressively. Yeah. <laughs> and Trish will be here still all day, yes. so yeah. if you have questions after this live show, you can just say, hey, Chris Jordan, we'll ask Trish what uh, yeah. this is yeah. or what yeah. that is. And I'll be hanging out Perfect. in the store. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me on the yeah, show. Yeah, thank great. you so much and for being here. And thank you both for coming in early this morning. Um, I know you're so glad we didn't do this at 2 a.m. We could have done this at 2.30 a.m., yeah. <laughs> but that's okay, 8.30 worked. Perfect. Yeah, so it's Next good. product <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll keep thanks that in mind. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> we yeah. will see thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Trisha. Thanks, yeah. see ya.